Please start with the things that you don't want to do. I often get asked if I always knew what I wanted to be and how straightforward my career path has been. Looking back today at what might appear like something that happened in a very natural progression, the reality is that I arrived to where I am today through the process of elimination. It has been exactly 35 years since I left this great school. Nothing much has changed. The only difference is that back in those days, we didn't have much of a ceremony to mark the most important departure. A departure from a protected place that we were simply born into and that felt like we had not much of a choice. A departure full of excitement, but also of anxiety about the path we are about to take. There were no graduation speeches to inspire us or simply to reassure us that everything was going to be okay. After 26 months of military service, I left for London to study civil engineering at Imperial College of Science, Technology and Medicine. Still today, one of the best rated engineering schools. It ticked all the boxes. Why? Because after all, I had made the decision not to pursue the real passion and talent that I had growing up as a child. Studying engineering seemed like a wise way to secure my future and sounded like a good compromise. Except that learning how to build buildings, roads and bridges was not exactly the creative career that I was secretly hoping for. I was fortunate enough to be born into a family that viewed an artist as someone bound to fail and unable to earn a good living. I use the word fortunate because this view forced me to search really deeply for the future that was closer to my true self. I'm grateful to my parents for challenging my aspirations, which grew stronger as a result. Everyone should ultimately be responsible for their own choices about their future. While studying engineering, I was told about a great school that was just around the corner. I was introduced to a professor there that opened the door to a new opportunity of mastering my engineering skills with a focus on product design. I graduated from Imperial with an honors degree and embarked on a two-year master's course in industrial design engineering at the Royal College of Art. My world suddenly changed. I was in an overwhelmingly exciting environment surrounded by creative people coming from all disciplines. But I discovered very soon that I was in the wrong course. It was still too close to engineering and too far from my idea of creativity. Yet, I stuck with it. It was the only somewhat creative course I could take at the master's level. And I considered myself a mature student that had already wasted too much time after an undergraduate degree and two years of military service. There was no point starting everything all over again. Two years on, my external examiner insisted that I had failed the course, simply because he didn't approve of my final year concept. It was the message cup, a simple voice recording and playback device meant to exchange messages within the domestic environment. The idea behind it is that each person in the household has their own cup where other people leave them their message. So if you want to leave a message to somebody that you share the house with, you pick up their cup, you talk to it, you put it facing down on the table, and that means that there is a message for them. So when they come home, simply turning the cup in an upright position, they play the message. I managed to graduate only because I had satisfied all the requirements of my department. The course was an ultimate failure for many. Most of the students went back to the old engineering jobs and many from other departments soon landed on new and exciting opportunities. I left the Royal College to embark into yet another long journey, this time really tough and unique journey, that of figuring out 
what my version of product design should be. I designed more message cups, bedside tables that vibrate as alarm clocks, and antisocial lights that glow only when there's absolute silence. Most people struggled to understand what I did. But I continued my exploration with the support of a tiny audience. And that is exactly what one needs to keep going. I taught yoga for many years to support my design ideas, as I was pretty unemployable in my field. I took part in fantastic exhibitions in world-renowned museums and institutions, but could still not earn a living from what I had studied. I never stopped knocking on the doors of my manufacturers to try and convince them to take on my designs, but every time I faced a closed door. In 2007, 14 years later, I took the big step to start my own brand to produce my own designs. If nobody trusts you in the production of your ideas, you should produce them yourself. Four years after that, PLOS, one of the biggest lighting brands in the world, invited me to start a collaboration. Many brands followed Floss, and today I'm working with over 20 design companies. I feel I had the slowest and longest route of a design career compared to everyone I know in the field. And if you ask me today whether I would change anything if I had to do it all over again, my answer would be no because it doesn't matter. Everyone is different, and there is never one way of doing things. Trust your instinct and follow a path that feels right for you. Get inspired from other people if it helps you develop your own drive so that one day you can inspire others. Don't compare yourselves to anyone around you because you are unique. Be whoever you want to be, because your sense of freedom will allow for space for others. It is a great honor to be a guest speaker for the graduation of class of 2021. I wish you all a great future.